We were alienated. Is that right? Yes. Colossians 1.21. We were alienated. That's cut off, separated. Right. Ephesians 2.12 says at that time we were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, yeah. having no hope and without God in the world. So we were alienated from God, but that's not all. We were also enemies in our mind by wicked works. We were cut off and separated, but we were also hostile to God. We were against God, and God was against us. This was our state. And then it says, yet now hath he reconciled. Do you know who reconciled you? Jesus Christ reconciled you. Yet now hath he reconciled, how did he do it? In the body of his flesh, through death. Why? To present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. And then it comes to our text, verse 23 says, If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. So notice who reconciled you. He reconciled you. Jesus Christ did it. He presents you holy and unblameable and unreprovable. In his sight. When Jesus is going to present an offering to God, it's going to be perfect. He's presenting you to God, and he's going to do it holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. That's who you are in the presence of God. Are you holy? You are absolutely holy. There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. But there's an if here. In some circles, this may be the most neglected if in the Bible. But it says if. It does say it. Whatever translation you look at, it says if. You are in this position of holiness before God. And he said, if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. In, the, in Christ Jesus, we have abundant provisions. But there is also peril. We have peril. We are in a state where if we do not continue in the faith, we will fall out of this position of holiness before God. God is able to keep you from falling. And we are kept by the power of God through faith. So what happens if you don't continue in the faith? This provision to keep you is through faith. But let's just, let's just embrace this and realize this is really what the scripture says. It does say if. If you continue in the faith. It is a condition of salvation. There are other conditional admonitions throughout the scripture. They say things like continue in the faith, hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of hope firm unto the end. Hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Hold fast your profession Make your calling and election sure. Stand fast in the Lord. Continue in my word, Jesus said. Endure unto the end. Having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Continue ye in my love. Cleave unto the Lord with purpose of heart. Brethren, we shall reap if we faint not. 
There's nothing unclear about this in the scripture. But I want you to notice that our salvation is conditioned on not being moved away from the hope of the gospel also. We often think of it as keeping the faith, continuing in the faith. But here he says, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. This is a condition of salvation. If we look at this backwards, if you are moved away from the hope of the gospel, then you are not holy. You're not. Sounds pretty important then. Pretty important. Our grasp on the hope of the gospel keeps us in this position of holiness before God. Amen. You have to realize that. But what about the people that don't think much about heaven? What about they don't think much about the resurrection of the dead, of a new body, a new heavens and a new earth? What if they're just thinking about this world? Do you know that hope perfects us? No, wait. Hope has perfected us. It says this in Hebrews 7, 19, for the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. It made us perfect. And then he says, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And we are saved by hope. I think there's a, a dreadful lack of understanding and preaching about the hope of the gospel. Amen. So I want to think today about what is the hope of the gospel, what it really is. It, what does it mean to be moved away from the hope of the gospel? And then what does a hope-dominated life look like? A life dominated by hope. I'll tell you, it affects everything you do. Amen. And you have to hold it fast. Be not moved away. So the hope of the gospel, he said, continue in the faith and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Hope is assumed as an initial part. That it's there with faith. If, if you're not to be moved away from it, it means you've got it. That is fundamental that it comes with the gospel Amen. if people don't have hope I don't know what gospel they're listening to right. what gospel have they received Amen. they probably received the gospel of all men most miserable gospel Amen. if if I mean if their religion is the essence of it is just about this life how to, how to be successful here. How to get through hard times. How to, how to live in this life. I have heard pastors disparage this idea of hope. They have said things like, oh, pie in the sky, by and by, when we die, but we need something now. The hope is what we have now. Amen. Teaching the people that the hope doesn't have power. This is a sin. Amen. The hope is how we get through. Amen. The gospel gives us hope. Amen. So hope is a fundamental and essential part of a new man. It says this in 1 Peter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. Begotten unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible. It, it can't diminish. Your inheritance can't diminish. It's laid up. And undefiled. 
and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Hope is to anticipate with pleasure. Think of that. It's like our expectation and our confidence. And the hope of the gospel in particular are the things the gospel promises that we are looking forward to but do not yet have. We don't have them now because what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Colossians 1 verse 5 says the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. That's where the hope is. It's in heaven. It's not here. The hope connects us to the world to come. We're saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. So hope essentially is things we do not see. In contrast, the world, men in this world without Christ may hope for many things, but it never goes beyond the compass of what is seen. It cannot. Man cannot hope for something beyond what is seen. They may hope for a better job or a good family life. They may hope for wealth and success. But the unseen, this is a unique hope. For the believer. It is based on the sure promises of God. It is the things we do not yet have. That's what we're hoping for. And if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. The hope is not about this life. Here's what the hope of the gospel is. It's your interest in the world to come. And your interest can grow or diminish. It's your stake. Your stake in the world to come how you long for it, how you think of it. Where, what place does it have in your heart, the hope of the gospel? Does it get pushed aside with the busyness of life? Or do you maintain? You have to not be moved away from the hope of the gospel. You have to maintain that interest in the world to come. Your life is because of what's coming. Amen. Everything is affected by it. This raises a question for self-examination. What, what is my proximity to hope? He said, be not moved away from it. How close are you to it? Where is the hope? In your thinking, in your focus, in your decisions, in your heart, where is the hope? Be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, brethren. If you're not moved away, it will not disappoint. So think about how faith, promises, the gospel, and hope are interrelated. The gospel is preached, and faith in promises produces longing and desire. Pretty simple, right? Faith in the promises produces longing and desire. That's hope. It is not hope until there is desire. So you might, you might hear something, you might just want to avoid going to hell. But hope has to do with longing and desire. Faith is the unseen substance of things hoped for. So it's all tied together. The gospel proclaims the promises and faith gets a hold of that and it produces hope within you. So be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. And Paul said that the hope, a hope in the resurrection 
was a dominant thought in the life of the Jews. He said they instantly serving God day and night hope for this to come. The resurrection of the dead. Paul said that in Acts 26, 7. So, what does it mean to be moved away from the hope of the gospel? This is more specifically what it mean, means to continue in the faith, grounded and settled. It's not like these are two separate things. Continuing in the faith and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, they are connected. It, the hope of the gospel is an expanded view of what it means to continue in the faith. Because they're tied together as you believe and you have faith, it produces hope. It does. Amen. In what ways are people moved away? So if he said, be not moved away from the, the hope of the gospel, it means that there is this possibility. Have you come to terms with that? God's ability to keep you is abundant. But there is this possibility. And we probably all have known people who have, at one time, they were looking for the world to come. They were looking for Jesus coming. They were longing to be with him. And somehow, they've moved away from that. But you say, the promises are so good, how would anyone be moved away from them? The promises of the God. How could you be moved away from this hope? Well, this doesn't happen by a sudden abandonment where someone finds that hope is somehow lacking or not satisfying. That doesn't happen. When people really have the hope of the gospel, it is satisfying. It is fulfilling. So it doesn't just happen suddenly. Little foxes spoil the vine the passing of time and the oil runs out we are in a competitive environment there are competing forces drawing for your affection the hope calls for your affection to be set on the things to come but the world is calling for your affection also and little by little it can draw you away the eroding effects of this world. This accents the need for us to continually be building up ourselves in our most holy faith, continually be hearing the gospel, continually be feeding your faith. Because if you neglect these things, they do diminish. Jesus talked about this parable and I want you to think about this, the seed that fell among the thorns. It's good seed, it's starting to grow up. It's a living plant, it's growing. But then he said, the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Everything's fine, he's growing up, but then there's some competing influences. Competing influences coming up in your life can choke the word of God and you can be moved away from the hope of the gospel. Don't let it happen, brethren. Yes. Amen. Cares of this life. Does anyone have cares? <laughs> Things you have to deal with? distractions so you're you're focused on Jesus you're focused on heaven that's where I'm going and then oh I've got to pay these bills I've got to take care of this brother Fred used to say you do your business in the world like going out in the rain you just go out get it done and get back but distractions can choke the Word of God legitimate things of life you have to take care of you have to manage them so they don't take away from your 
faith and hope. Amen. Distractions, business, hardship, cares of this life, just, just things. Riches. How about comfort and ease? Pleasures of this life. You start to enjoy the things of this world, they diminish. What I'm saying, this is a competitive environment. So you put your affection and your attention on something else, there's a cost to it. There are consequences to putting your focus on something else because your focus on the world to come and on Jesus will diminish. And then he said the lust of other things. These are competing desires. You have to keep you have to keep the thorns out, brethren. Do you think that giving your time and affection and focus to something else can occur without consequence? It takes away from your hope of the gospel. I think in general, people do not get enough food. The people of God do not get enough food to make a strong hope. Talk about the things of God. Talk about the promises and the gospel. The scripture says that our hope is an anchor for the soul. But what happens if you're moved away from the hope? So think about remedies for this. To continue in the faith, this is to not be moved away from the hope of the gospel. Grounded and settled. I will not be moved. Praise God. We sang that song. A strong affirmation. I shall not be moved. Paul said, none of these things move me. There he said that bonds and afflictions were waiting for him wherever he went. None of these things move me. I will not be moved. But it's as simple as hearing the gospel produces hope and believing it. And uh, hope is also called a helmet. For 1 Corinthians 5 verse 8, But let us who have the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Here, faith and love protect your heart, but hope protects your mind. Hope has to do with your mind, where you're thinking. Where your desire, your interest in the world to come. So let's think about the hope dominated life. Amen. How to know your proximity to the hope of the gospel. If we could make a hope thermometer or a blood pressure monitor and put it on you, where's your hope really? Where's your attention and your focus? What affects your decisions in life? How real is it to you? How real is the hope to you? Is it animating you? Part of your daily life. How much sway does the hope of the gospel have on your decisions? So how, how does the hope of the gospel inform your decisions? Is it, is it even at the table? How much sway? Does it shape the course of your life? Are things planned and done and said in light of the hope of the gospel? Brethren, we want to have that hope right up front. Right up front and present. A more basic question is, what are you living for? This world is passing away, brethren. The world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So if this world's going to be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for 
and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. So we're looking for that. The gospel must be our close companion at all times. The hope of the gospel. We have to be deliberate in this or other things will affect your focus and decisions. They will. Other things coming in affect you. So let's think about some situations affected by hope. Well, they're having a refreshing waters renewal and it's three days all day long sitting and hearing the word of God. And your flesh says, that sounds kind of hard. It's a long drive. I don't know. Hope says, I've got to go. Hope says, you'll be richly rewarded. Uh, my soul needs to be fed. It's like these kind of discussions go on in the boardroom of your mind. And uh, is hope at the table? Saying, Let's go. But brethren, I want you to see that you can't, you know, you might say it's good for me. But it's good for me isn't enough. It's good for me hasn't worked for the flesh, for this world. You need something more. And that something more is the hope of the gospel. It drives you. It moves you. It enlivens you to take hold of eternal life. When you're in a time of temptations, striving against sin, says in Hebrews, striving against sin. Are you doing that? Hope rises up and says, blessed is he that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Endure temptation. Say no to ungodliness and worldly lusts. I like that song we said. We sang, goodbye to sin. Amen. Goodbye. Amen. What about taking up your cross and denying yourself? Flesh says, I don't really want to do that. And hope rises up. Who invited you here? Get him out of here. Get him back on the cross. Hope says, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Hope rises up and rescues you from temptation. Amen. What about if you're misused? Your ability to be misused well. Your ability to be humble. Hope says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. Well, what if you're just tired? Is anyone tired? <laughs> They're just tired. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For we shall, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. So hope, hope is attached to the outcome. Hope is attached to what God is going to do and give in response to our faith. How about... Your possessions, how tightly you hold your possessions. Well, hope was in the believers who said they had, uh, they took joyfully the spoiling of their goods. How did they do that? Knowing that in heaven you have a better and an enduring substance. See, living hope is aware of our inheritance at all times. Sorrow, disappointment, suffering, hope all affects, hope affects all of this. Why art thou cast down on my soul? The, the hope within you stirs up. 
Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Hope affects our whole life. Where you spend your time, hope, hope should have the say in that. The love of this world. Hope, hope tells you, I am not going to love this world. I am not. Hope should instruct your love of the brethren. You can see, you can see the, the spirits of just men made perfect. And you can love the brethren. Hope will affect your health, your view of health, your view of death. Of course, how much you're affected by current events. So uh, hope is living in the world to come. Jesus lived there. They told him about the Tower of Siloam. And uh, he said he doesn't have anything to do with the things of this world. I tell you, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. Living in the world to come, we have been raised up and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our conversation is in heaven. That's what this is talking about. The hope of the gospel dominates and affects your life. The tenor of your whole life is affected. What you're living for taken over by hope. Abraham was dominated by hope. The promises given to him drove him to believe God and to not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. He held on to faith firm to the end and it was the hope of the reward that God had promised. You want to make sure that hope is bright and clear and present in all of your life. Yes. Amen. Not kind of like a nondescript, undefined shape in the distance. Some people live like this. Well, we don't know much about the world to come. Just living for today. Just living in this world. Paul was weeping about some. He said they were enemies of the cross of Christ. Why? He said they mind earthly things. They mind earthly things. You don't have anything to do with this world as far as, as far as when it's not related to your faith and the world to come. So I want to give you an ex exhortation to move closer to the hope. If you can be moved away, move closer to it. Let it grow within you. Let it, let it be your north star. Let it be driving and directing everything you do. Expose yourself to more of the gospel, not less. Not less. It's high time to awake out of sleep. This isn't a time to be sloughing off because of discomfort or for ease. Press in to lay hold of the gospel because your hope depends on it. How shall we escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven? Peter said it would have been better not to have known the way of righteousness than after having known it to turn from the holy commandment. Would have been better not to even have been saved. Well, brethren, this is a time. We live in a dangerous time. This is a time of very little preaching of the gospel. And therefore, it is a time of very little faith. And consequently, it is a time of very little hope. All too many churches today, the ministry rarely gets beyond the scene. They offer help to get through hard times, solve problems, 
have good relationships, to be successful and happy. It sounds nice, but we are in this competitive environment. And focus on this world takes people's eyes off of the world to come. This emphasis is detrimental to hope, which is not seen, and faith, which is the substance of things hoped for. In contrast with much modern ministry, the gospel speaks of promises laid up in heaven and draws our attention to things to come. Thus, faith in gospel promises produces hope, a living, animating, dominating, life-directing hope. Amen. We must continue in the faith, Amen. grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. If you let it slip, it will be to your peril. But if you hold on to that hope, you will be richly rewarded, brethren. Amen.